Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Maison African Motives, uh, still working on industrial electronics and tools. So in this platform, we are just going to focus on the question paper which was written in June 2022, X paper uh, on BC theory. I've got a question which was actually on question number one. Uh, that was the circuit that we are being given uh, to analyze and to study the diagram. That is the circuit diagram. And from there, answer the questions which follow. So we had, uh, we are to check here, first question was to calculate the total resistance in the circuit. Uh, that is, if we are to cross check here guys, according to the circuit that we have, we have got a parallel circuit here. The first parallel, we can just have this as our parallel circuit, which is the first one. And we also have a parallel circuit again here, which is the second one, okay. So it was best for you to combine these two uh, in parallel. We just have the total resistance of the parallel. So let's just have it here. This is 1.1. Okay, so we are going to have for the para first parallel circuit, we remember that the total resistance in parallel, that is the product over the sum of the resistors. So we've got product over sum, which is the product of R1 and R2. So it's going to be R1 by R2 over the sum of the resistors, which is R1 plus R2. So if we are to substitute here, that is 16 by 48 over 16 plus 48, the total of the resistors. Okay, so this we can calculate. The first part uh, that is just a fraction of 16, by 48, whatever that we have, we are going to have 16 plus 48, which is 12. So this is going to be 12 ohm. So this is for the first parallel circuit. We move on to this part, which is a parallel circuit again. Let's just see the total for the two. Uh, again, the, the formula is going to be the same, the product over the sum, but this time we are referring to R3 and R4. So it's going to be R3, by R4, that is the product over R3 plus R4. So R3 is 24 ohms, so it's going to be 24 times 12 over 24 plus 12. Okay, so that is the total uh, resistance for these two parallel, uh, which is 24 by 12 over the total of 24 plus 12, like that. So this will be eight ohms, okay. So we have the total for the two parallel resistors that we had. So what I'm going to do now is to just have a sketch uh, for this circuit, how it's going to look like. Remember this, we combined these two. So it's now a single resistor here. So we are going to have a supply. This is how our circuit is going to look like. Our circuit is going to be the supply as it was. Then those two resistors in parallel is now a single resistor, which is a, uh, uh, the first parallel circuit here, we calculated this and we got 12 ohms. So this is going to be 12 ohms. So we now have 12 ohms here. Okay, let's move on to the other part. We have got uh, R5, it was never affected. So it's going to remain as it is R5 in a parallel condition. So we've got our R5 here. So that's our R5 as it was before. Okay, and the resistance for R5, that is 45 ohms. So we have got 45 ohms here, 45 ohms. Then these two are now combined. It's now a single resistor, which is eight ohms. This is the second parallel, which is eight ohms. So we are going to have our combination like this. So it's going to be combined together. And we've got R6. And we have got R6 like this. So this is how our circuit is going to look like now. Uh, this is R6, which is 22 ohms. And this is 8 ohms for this parallel. Remember, we calculated the total for the parallel for the second circuit, which, which is 8 ohms. And this is our R6, which is the one that we had uh, previously. But this one is the parallel and the parallel. Okay. Now, our, from this diagram that we have, uh, not forgetting the currents, uh, the currents, they're going to remain as they were, uh, the supply as it is, this is the supply current and so forth, even the voltage, but we are worried about the resistance. So this part does not matter for now. Okay, 
So what can we do from this part now to have the total resistance? Okay, we can see that these two are now in series eight and 22 are in series. So we're going to have RS, which is eight plus 12, 22. Remember in series, you just add. So this was the eight plus 22, which is 30 ohms. So from this part that we have, we have got 30 ohms. So our diagram is actually going to change or is going to actually look in a similar way with that one. But now we have got a single resistor like this. So let me read raw so that you can understand what these formulas actually mean. So remember we combined these two resistors. So it's now a single resistor now of 30 ohms. So we now have 30 ohms. 45 ohms and also 12 ohms. These two are connected together here. So to have the total resistance, we can cross check again. These two are in parallel. These two are in parallel and in series with this one. So let's start with the parallel part, product over sum. So we're going to have RP, which is product over sum. That's 45 times 30 over 45 plus 30. Okay, so that's it for the parallel part. Let's see what you're going to have. 45 by 30 over 45 plus 30. So this is 45 plus 30 like this, and that's 18 ohms. So from this circuit, we now have an 18 ohms, which is in series. Because once we combine this now a single resistor, so it's now in series with that. So your diagram actually or automatically will be like this. The one that we had in series and also this one that we calculated, which is a total. So we are going to have at the end, uh, the 12 ohms, which was already there and the total for these two. So it will be in series like this, 18 ohms. So we, with the two resistors which are left and these two resistors are in series, it means we can calculate our RRT which is the sum of the two. Remember in series we add, so it's going to be 12 plus 18. And if we add 12 plus 18, we are going to obtain 30 ohms. So that is the total resistance for the given circuit, for the whole circuit that we had. So there are actually so many that you can do, but that's the easiest way to branch and to redraw diagrams so that you understand uh, the diagram. From the diagram that we have, you can actually understand how the currents are flowing and how the resistors are connected. So let's check the other part of the question, which is 1.2. We need the total current flowing through the circuit. So we can actually analyze, we can actually work with the resistance that we had since we have the total resistance. Remember that total current is uh, the total voltage over the total resistance. So this is, uh, sorry, this is actually 1.2. So the total current is going to be the total voltage over the total resistance. So remember, the total voltage, we have got our voltage here of 36 volts and the total resistance, we calculated it here. So it's 36 over 30. Okay, so that's it. We can have our total current 36 divided by 30. That's six over five, which is 1,2. So we are going to obtain 1,2 amps. Okay, as the total current, remember the units, don't forget the units and uh, make sure that you apply the units uh, properly. So that's the current that we have. And uh, let's see the other part of the question, which is uh, now to calculate the voltage drop that is 1.3. We need the voltage drop across R2, the voltage drop across R2. This is our R2 here. This is our R2. So we need the voltage drop that is going to be affected by R2. Okay, this is a parallel circuit. Remember what we had before. Uh, I want us to check something. Remember, we've got the total current. We calculated our current. Now, now here, this is our total current, which is 1,2 amps. And um, we are seeing that's a parallel circuit. And this current actually is going to branch into two. We are going to have another current, uh, one of the part flowing through R1, and another part is going to flow this side to R2. So this current is actually going to uh, branch into two, this part here and also this part here. So we can actually take advantage of that using our current divider rule. 
we can calculate current flowing through R2 since we need the voltage. The question is to calculate the voltage drop across resistor R2. So having current which flows through this resistor here, we can actually have the voltages at the end. So let's apply our current divider rule. Remember current divider rule. So in this case, this is one point, let's check. That's 1.3, okay. So 1.3, so remember current divider rule for us to have this current, we already we have got I1, I2, so we can just name this one. We can name it I R2, which is the current which flows in R2, yeah. So that it, it can be easier for us to check which one is it. So the current that is going to flow in this resistor R2, we are going to use the opposite resistor on top, which is R1. This is the formula for current divider rule, current divider rule. So it's going to be R1 over the total of the two, R1 plus R2 times the current which these two are sharing or which is supplying, which is 1,2. And this 1,2 is the total current. So that's the formula. So that means I R2 is going to be R1, which is 16, over the total of R1 and R2, which is 16 plus 48. So you've got 16 plus 48 times the total current of 1,2. So this can actually give us the current flowing through R2. So from this part, we can use our calculator. Uh, that's 16 over the total 16 plus 48, whatever that we get, we multiply to 1,2. And it's going to be 3 over 10, which is 0, 0,3. So we've got 0, 0,3 amps as the current. And the, but the, remember the question, the question is not for us to calculate the current, but the question is for us to calculate the voltage drop. So since we have current and resistance, we know that voltage is equivalent to the current times the resistance. So that means V R2, the voltage affecting the resistor R2 is going to be I R2 times resistor R2, which is the current in this resistor here, which is 0 0.3 times R2, R2 here is 48 ohms. So if we multiply 0 0.3 and 48, that is going to be the voltage that we need. Okay, so that's 0 0.3 times 48, which is 14,4. Uh, so this will be 14,4 volts. This is voltage, guys, remember uh, the units, they are very, very important. When you are answering these questions, make sure that you apply the units properly, uh, the way they are being used or the way that they are being applied. Okay, so that was it for this one. Let's see the other part of the question 1.4, the current I2. So here we are supposed to calculate the current I2. Okay, so let's check from the diagram where we have I2. This is where we are having I2 here, okay. I remember that previously we calculated these two, we combined these two and obtained a single circuit from these two here. So that now is that total resistance is the one that you need. So which means we can take this diagram back to this platform here. I2 here from this diagram we combined, which means we are going to take it from this part here. That is where we are going to have uh, a nicer part to explain. So when we combine these two resistors, three resistors, we got 30 ohms. This is where our I2 is flowing. This is our I1 here, don't forget. And this is where you are having the total current. And we have the total current of 1,2. Remember, the total current here is 1,2. So in order for you to have I2, which is the current which is being which is going to flow from this one? We can also apply the current divider rule because the same current is the one that we are going to see here. So I want you to see it properly. Uh, this was one point four. If I'm not mistaken, that is our one point four. Okay, so it's going to be like this: the total current which is flowing. Then we branch it into the two like this. So it was going to be your diagram was actually going to look like this. This is the part that we need actually. So here I'm just focusing on the current. This current that we see here is the same that is going to appear on this part. So this is where we are going to have 1,2 amps. 
and our I2 is on this part, which is having the total of 30 ohms in the resistor, in the resistance, and we've got 45 ohms. So that means we can still apply the current divider rule because we want to calculate I2. So to have I2, remember you use the opposite resistor, which is this one of 45 on top. So it's 45 over the sum of the two, which is 45 plus 30 times the total current, which is flowing into the two branches, these two branches, which is 1,2. So that's it from the formula. We can calculate that current. So that means we are going to have 45 over the total, which is 45 plus 30. Whatever that we get here, we multiply it to 1,2. So there are so many ways that we can actually use. We have got 0, 0,72 amps. So this is going to be 0, 0,72 amps. Yeah, but I think that was the easiest way. So as you can see, if you have got the diagrams in, an, uh, in a simpler manner like this, it can actually help you to take the values, uh, the corresponding values as they are. Uh, yes, it can be that you can uh, have so many ways of applying, calculating the currents and so forth, you can do that. But I think that was the easiest way. And for you to, answer, to attempt these questions in an easier way, try by all means to reduce your diagrams uh, in simplest form from one form to another so that you are and you understand how the current is flowing and how do you calculate those total resistance. So that's it guys from Amazon African Motives working on industrial electronics and to till we meet again.